At the end of every year, we reflect on our industry and we ask ourselves, what will we see in the year to come? Normally, the answer is the same. The industry continues to grow. This year is a little different. The adoption of 3D printing isn't just increasing, it's shifting. We see shifting approaches, shifting mindsets, shifting markets, and even shifting limitations. These are the trends we expect to have the biggest impact in 2024. You may know the saying, there is a time and place for everything. And with 3D printing, there's two. And the adoption is increasingly going into two clearly defined and coexisting approaches. And the first is perhaps the traditional method, 3D printing as a service. And what we've seen here is companies are starting to rely on external expertise to help support their additive journey. And that's why we're looking at service bureaus. And so when we're looking at that, a lot of service bureaus will ask you, hey, what do you want to print? And I'll deliver it to you. It's a very quick, affordable way for you to get one-off parts, but also rapid prototyping parts as well. And so what's really interesting there is it makes it a very easy and affordable way for organizations to get access to the additive manufacturing technology. But when we're looking at the second approach, it shows how successful 3D printing has really come along. It is no longer an afterthought when we're talking about mass manufacturing, but we're really looking at companies finding it a great way to, to utilize this valuable technology and integrate it into their production process. And they do it in many different ways. Maybe they're trying to print specific components for large series end use parts, or perhaps they want to mass manufacture customized parts for individuals or even patients like insoles and, and eyewear. Either way, what's really interesting here is there's a clear demand for application specific additive manufacturing um, machines and workflows. And here, what we're seeing is innovation isn't exclusive just at machines, but it goes far beyond from 3D printing, post-processing, finishing, quality control, and as we all know, 3D printing software as well. And so as the wall between traditional manufacturing and 3D printing disappears, companies are looking for ways to merge these two technologies in an effort to optimize their overall manufacturing process. It's interesting to hear you talk about um, how adoption is changing because actually the market is changing too. And traditionally 3D printing has, has offered two choices, low budget or top end machines. And, and quality always came at a premium. Now this left a large customer segment um, whose needs weren't, weren't fully met basically. Machine manufacturers know that. So they've started to offer mid-price machines aimed at this mid-range market. And that is now reaching quality levels that is, that is really competitive and cover basically the entire technology spectrum. So as a result, companies can now get the quality they need at a lower price than ever before and in essentially any type of material they, they might require. And that presents new opportunities for different customer groups. We've identified three core user models in particular that benefit from this trend. And I think the first one is price sensitive online players. Um, now, now these online marketplaces, they, they typically rely on price to win business. So the benefit here is, is pretty obvious. They can now gain a competitive advantage by keeping their costs at that accessible level, but still um, you know, promising a better quality than, than they used to do. The second group is in-house 3D printing company or internal service bureaus, if you want. These could be companies on a budget that are, that are seeking for a higher quality, um, but not necessarily for a higher cost, obviously. So, so think of what's already happening basically in automotive manufacturing where OEMs are already using 3D printing on the line to create jigs and fixtures and tools. Um, that's a perfect example of, of that scenario. And then lastly, application-specific 3D printing, which previously required high maintenance, high cost machine setups. But by fine-tuning a mid-range machine for this one specific application, they can really scale manufacturing of quality parts, but at a much lower entry cost. That's indeed an important shift. But we're also seeing a mind shift in the way companies are looking into 3D printing. Now for years our industry focused in convincing companies um, why they should use 3D printing. And as a result, it benefits are no longer in question. We all know that companies see how it speeds up production, for example, how it can reduce costs for prototypes, how it can reduce the reliance on supply chains, and how it can empower small customization. 
it's now considered as a valid option in most circles, actually. They view 3D printing as a complementary technology, not a competitive technology at all. And they know that it can be used alongside traditional manufacturing mm -hmm. techniques. That shifting mindset brings new questions, of course. Before it was all about why, now it's all about how. For example, how can I integrate the technology and scale a production? But companies are struggling to find the answers. And it's because the lack of necessary expertise and knowledge inside the company and organization. They're struggling to recruit an expert workforce, for example. And while they see the need to bring in people with the right knowledge and skills, it's easier said than done. How these companies overcome the barrier may determine everything. Their 3D printing journey may be a great success, or on the other hand, uh, it may never get off the ground. And our industry as a whole can help with addressing the challenges these manufacturing companies face. That could be through training, workforce development, identifying new business models, or providing new and easier to use software and hardware. That's very exciting. It's exciting to see that companies have a better understanding of the unique benefits of 3D printing. But even if they can address some of the remaining challenges, they will only truly embrace the technology if it comes at a competitive cost. The relationship between quality and price is incredibly important. After all, the question has always been, can 3D printing become a mass manufacturing technology? The answer has always been, it depends. To become viable, its costs need to be as desirable as its benefits. Many doubt it that would ever be possible. But it's happening right now. Let's take a quick look at the state of 3D printing in China. New machines provide quality and efficiency at scale. And affordable materials make much larger orders feasible. We see, for instance, razor-thin titanium hinges for foldable phones and the mass production of smartwatch cases. We are talking here millions of parts per year. Then we look at the markets like Germany and the US. They're accelerating this process too by focusing on multi-laser printers. They're helping driving down the cost of machines. It will still be difficult to match other costs like materials, but the growth of this technology is inspiring because it shows what's possible when we integrate 3D printing's design capabilities into industrial scale production processes at an industrial cost. That's exciting.